Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Corey Walsh podcast, part of the Extended Cut. Today, we are going to be interviewing Bronny Props, talking all things MLB, even some Korean baseball at the start. Uh, we all missing some stuff going on, and a lot of people are missing baseball. And I think that it definitely should still be talked about, as there is rumors a season could come around at some point. And if you like what you're listening here, you can also find us on our new YouTube channel, The Extended Cut. And without further ado, let's interview Ronnie Props. All right, so uh, now on the line here, we got uh, Ronnie Props, a fan favorite from uh, his, I would put in air quotes, expert picks from the uh, NFL playoffs. Welcome back, Ronnie Props. It was a rough NFL playoffs, but you know what? It's 2020. We're turning a page. It's all going to work itself out. <laughs> all right. Uh, so the KBO, uh, has just, it seems like it's the first, um, professional sports to really return into action here. For those who don't know, the KBO is, uh, the Korean baseball league. And uh, if you're wondering how that they're actually fulfilling this, it's because players and coaches will go through, uh, fever screenings before entering the stadiums and the umpires and base coaches will wear masks during the games and they have to wear the masks during the the, when they're at the training facilities and fans are also not allowed at the games until the KBO is convinced the risk of the infection has been minimized. But if any team or any member of a team gets tested positive for the virus this season, the league will actually get shut down for at least three weeks. And so just a ticking time bomb. Yeah, basically. And they also still plan to maintain their uh, 144 game regular season schedule. But, you know, to compensate for the COVID, they uh, decided to shorten the first round of the playoffs from a best of five to a best of three. So as you can tell, this is probably going to go swimmingly. What are your thoughts here? It's only a matter of time before this blows up. Um, I will say it has been decent baseball. I mean, we got former major leaguers playing right now. I mean, it doesn't look terrible. So, you know, it's great to see. Thank God to have something, even if it's a 1 a.m. on a Tuesday. Yeah, I mean, the, they have uh, like some, I guess you could put in air quotes, big names here. They have Casey Kelly, who was actually a first round pick of the Red Sox back in 2008 and was a four time top 100 prospect. Uh, yep. They also have William Cuevas, who was also a uh, Red Sox in 2016, I believe. And I believe uh, Casey Casey Kelly was traded in the Adrian Gonzalez trade. He went to San Diego. And turned out to be nothing there as a short right-handed pitcher drafted out of high school. Yeah, so not, not shocking he didn't make it. Yeah, I am astounded. I uh, also the last player who like these are all air quotes. Like I feel like anyone who doesn't like watch a, like a shit ton of baseball wouldn't know who half these people are. But uh, Aaron Brooks also who was uh, he made nine starts for the A's in 2016. So with those heavy hitters for names, you're getting great stuff. It's more desperation than anything else, because let's let's face it, there is no one that was going to watch ESPN at 1 a.m. in the night just for this. Well, it was me. If oh. there were people that did it. No, I'm saying if the season was like going on, like MLB was. Oh yeah, you couldn't happening. have it. Absolutely not. Some of the games in the MLB go till one in the morning. You ever watch the Angels play the Mariners? <laughs> Always. <laughs> is is isn't there a uh, MLB like Direct TV Sunday ticket for baseball? In some yeah. Way? Uh, yeah, it's a DirecTV package. Um, happened a little while ago. I, it's not as known as the, the, the football one, but um, yeah, it, it's there. But now, I mean, especially with MLB TV that came out, everything's online and easy. You know, it's 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 much better that way. So do you think the KBO is just going to hold people over for the short amount of time it's existing? Or is this actually like maybe the boost that the KBO needs to not be one of the worst leagues? No, I mean, it's... Asian professional baseball. I mean, it's the best we have right now. I don't see it really uh, long-term saving us. But uh, if baseball doesn't come back this year, I mean, it's all we're going to have to look forward to. So, you know, for those degenerate gamblers out there, it's kind of all we got. Very true. <laughs> now that I'm no longer in New Hampshire, I do not have access to my DraftKings sportsbook. So I am very upset. And another thing about the KBO I wanted to bring up, we can't forget about my guy, Tyler Saladino. The ex uh, middle infielder, third baseman, kind of jack of all trades for the Chicago White Sox. So uh, another stud out in the KBO. Uh, speaking of studs, uh, you brought to my attention a uh, uh, Red Sox legend is attempting a comeback, not in the MLB, but in another foreign league as well. Yeah, Manny Ramirez is getting after it. And not just not any Manny Ramirez, 48 year old Manny Ramirez. <laughs> Brett Favre syndrome. 
Yeah, not great. Guy just can't stay retired. I don't know what his problem is. Not even making enough money in his career. But uh, he wants to play for a, a Taiwanese baseball team. Uh, apparently, he has an offer to coach the team, and he's trying to turn that into an offer to play for the team. God. It's like when Jordan was the GM of the Wizards. He's like, you know what? Actually, I'm going to play. <laughs> yeah, basically. Like, I, I can do this better myself. Yeah, because it always pans out when the 45-plus-year-old attempts to just get right back into it. Those itches always work out well. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll tell you, though. I was watching the video he posted the other day. Dude can still swing it. Oh, really? <laughs> so still, you can still swing. But he's only you'd only think he'd like thrive as a DH, though, right? Like nothing else. Well, I mean, he, no, he could never play the field. I mean, <laughs> yeah. but I, I don't even know if that machine's throwing more than 60 miles an hour, but he looks good swinging. <laughs> All right. So so if you were going to bet on it, you'd feel confident on Randy, Manny Ramirez winning the MVP? Uh, for the C- Taiwanese. Yeah, the CPBL Taiwanese team. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, I'll put, I'll put a little on it. Sprinkle. Uh, so I guess we have to bite the bullet here and talk about the MLB. Um, so what are, what are you hearing for rumors about returns? There's a huge rumor right now that's been confirmed by all the big guys, um, Heyman and et cetera, that spring training part two is going to start on June 10th with a soft opening day of July 1st. What do you mean now, at- by that ask me if i think that's going to happen i'm going to say not a chance apparently they want to have all the guys back in spring training and june 10th playing some expedition expedition exhibition games getting back in the swing of things with a july 1st opening day rest of the season now obviously they can't play 162 it'll probably be i don't know 100 maybe even less than that but that's the plan as of right now i don't see it happening i just think it's it's an empty hope Empty promise, no hope. I mean, it's just there's just too much in too much in the world going on right now for that to actually come to fruition. And you know, life sucks. So get a helmet. <laughs> so why do you think it is like sports like the NBA and the NFL? People are like gripping to have back, and it seems more likely than not that the NBA will come back. But why do you feel like baseball wouldn't get the same type of treatment for like the need for wanting it to come back? Even though baseball is America's pastime, I, know, I think it's fair to say that football and basketball are just a more popular sport. We can go into an entire episode just on why that is, but no, baseball has been gone since November, you know, early November, and it hasn't really been back in the forefront yet. And, you know, the NBA was making the playoff push. We kind of, the world kind of changed right before March Madness with like, they were canceling Big East tournament games at halftime. The hockey season was going on at the time. It, it's just, it's very difficult for baseball to kind of overtake basketball and football. So it's just, it's not on the top of the list. You know, they don't have the star power there. You know, they don't have the, the Twitter personalities there. They don't have the highlights there. I mean, you watch sports center, it's just a LeBron James show. Mm-hmm. So, 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 but don't you think out of all the sports that can come back, it makes the most sense for baseball because it's the easiest thing to keep. Like if we're talking social distancing. The players are far apart when they're on the field in general. For right. like half the game, they're spending it at least six feet apart. It's really the dugout is the closest they're going to get. Oh, for sure. I think it, you know, it makes the most sense. And, you know, third baseman and first baseman are at least uh, 90 feet apart. So, I, you know, it's just I, I can't put a finger on a why. You know, I'm not a doctor. That's not my forte. Mm-hmm. But I just with everything in the world and how things are, I just I just don't see it working out. I, you know, I, I think we're going to miss the 2020 baseball season this year. That is definitely bleak because at this point I would absorb a full baseball season with open arms. <laughs> yeah, I, I have, no, I have no, nothing less. I'm a baseball guy. Baseball and UConn football, as you know. Oh, yes. And baseball is really all I have to live for. And there's nothing on the horizon. I'm watching the KBO at 1 a.m. on a Tuesday. And I don't know if you caught, you caught this today. It was a rain delay. They started the season in a rain delay. So first pitch was like at 145 in the morning. Thank God. <laughs> Just yeah. to appeal so, to all the ESPN. Is it on ESPN 1 or 2? It was ESPN 2. Oh, great. They're not even a one, ESPN 1 at 1 a.m. time slot. Oh, my God. I'll tell you, though, I've never heard of ESPN 1 before. I think it's just ESPN. But, uh, That's yeah. Good. <laughs> good, good counter. <laughs> yeah, it's it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough with the baseball. You know, there's nothing going on. And, they came out with the, the different divisions the other day. Like, you know, if they come back, there would be a it'd be three division format with like the Mets, the Red Sox, the Yankees, and the Nationals all in the same division. 
you know, it's just, it's great to talk about and to get excited about, but I need something to look forward to. And right now I just, I, I don't have it. If they did do that format where they like change the divisions, would this le- wouldn't this season then just have a huge asterisk nest to it anyway? So let's say like a team that never won before won. Would when people like historians looking back on it be like, oh, this was the COVID season, so like this oh, doesn't yeah. really count. I think no matter what happens, um, new divisions, no divisions, same divisions, there will always be an asterisk to any MVP, Cy Young, World Series win. You know, no doubt in my mind. Okay. All right, so as a Red Sox fan, you uh, I feel like I have to ask you. Um, so the Red Sox were uh, penalized for their cheating allegations. I just wanted to know from your standpoint, uh, we've already interviewed Ian a few months back. What are your thoughts now that the actual uh, hammer has been hit? What a complete crock of shit this was for everybody involved. Embarrassing look for baseball. And the Red Sox, I mean, they looked – they look fine at, at the end of this. They, they lost, I think, a second-round pick, and they suspended Alex Cora for shit he did with the Astros, not even stuff he did with the Red Sox. Absolute joke. No finding anything happened in the playoffs. They were using some video during the game to, to some ball guy out in center field to come down and look at the video. It, everybody's doing this. It was ridiculous. If you looked at any other team, the Yankees, you know, you would see they did it too. There's even an athletic article that came out six months ago, brought up the teams that were caught doing it. The Yankees were one of those teams. So you just but, feel like it was like a headhunt because of the... It was a headhunt. It was because Evan Drellich came out with this article who used to work for the Red Sox. Then he left. And now all he's got, he does is talk shit about the Red Sox. <laughs> so I piled on in the article. It was ridiculous. Complete joke. A complete facade. Never happened. It, you know, it's just a waste of everybody's time. And then they dropped the penalty, like, out of nowhere. Like, you know, the MLB comes in, like, it was like a Tuesday mid-morning. They came out and they're like, oh, oh here's what we're going to do. It's like, shut the fuck up. Like, just move on. It seemed like everyone kind of forgot about the Red Sox aspect of it because, like, the Astros were the heavy hitter, and the Red Sox were just kind of like the ugly stepsister of this whole thing where you're just, like, forgot about them. And then the MLB, like, what, like, two, was it two weeks ago? Was just like, oh, by the way, yeah, if you were waiting for the Red Sox punishment, it was like a little slap on the wrist to the team. But the manager gets the heavy hit for being – Red in- Sox weren't even – the ugly stepsister. They were an unrelated friend who lived in the same town. <laughs> the, the, the Astros are banging trash cans. There's rumors that they're wearing vibrating shit on their body, you know, and an off speed pitch is coming. You know, the, the Red Sox are looking at video in between innings. Like, oh, what's the guy doing? Like, I mean, come on. This is just, it's, it's brutal. And you know what? And I, I got to be honest with you. If I, I'm a Red Sox fan, and if it came out that the Yankees did this and like this is what they found, like, who cares? I mean, this is nothing. So you're saying you think Altuve wasn't shy? <laughs> and that's why he didn't Dude, take off the jersey? That is the, the biggest bullshit I've ever heard in my life. If you got the, you know, I mean, he's five foot four. don't get me wrong. But the dude is pretty jacked for being five foot four. I'd walk around with no shirt on all day if I was him, <laughs> ripping his jersey off. His wife gets upset. His wife is cashing those checks that he's getting for millions of dollars. Like, get out of here. The, so I guess this is a good transition real quick to the um, the Astros. Um, so now that these – well, first off, the way they responded to these allegations was, like, no way, <laughs> like, apologetic. PR nightmare. These people are millionaires. The owner's a billionaire. How don't you have a PR team, like, on call? How don't you talk to somebody? You come out there and just talk out of your ass for the first, I don't know, four weeks this was happening. It was bigger than any other game in spring training. It was just them denying it, even though the evidence is right in front of them of what they did. They just refused to accept it. And they're like, oh, yeah, no, I didn't. No, you guys are assholes for like making us seem like this. No, the, the, the evidence is what makes you seem like this. It was terrible. And they go out and then they fire their GM and their coach, like, thinking, like oh, that'll end it. <laughs> Slate like, clean. I, yeah, like, please. You, and. I, I get that you can't punish the players. I understand that they signed an immunity thing. Like they can't get punished. The problem with the MLBPA, understandable. We don't want to be headhunting players, but at the same time, like can, can nobody stand up here and say something? Cause this is ridiculous. It's a stay on the game. I think this may blow you away. I think this is worse than the steroid issue. 
This is the biggest problem in baseball. It's got to be handled. It's got to be stopped. I mean, to be a professional baseball player, first off, is so ridiculously hard. You have to be so good. And then you get to know what pitch is coming. I don't care if you got Randy Johnson throwing 103 out there. If you know 103 is coming and your job as a man is to hit baseballs, you're going to figure it out. It wasn't that Randy Johnson threw 103. It was that he had a slider that would – slide three feet across the plate and you had no idea what was coming. That's what makes the great pitchers great. If that's gone, everybody sucks. Hitter's up there and he is going to just rip the tits off the pitcher no matter who it is. Yeah, and then the worst just I feel like the worst part of it is from like a like a casual fan's perspective is just that there was no accountability, but then the team like you said, like they fired the GM and manager and like, "All right, this is basically a brand new team." No, like the slate that your reputation is permanent. It will take you so long to not be the enemies of baseball now. You were already kind of like people actually know, weren't the Astros like really respected before this came out because of the well, way they were built? Well, yeah, the Astros, when I was growing up, I, mean, I was born in 88. When I was growing up, the Astros sucked. They were the worst team in baseball. You know, it was embarrassing to watch them. Then they dropped everybody, got the first picks in the draft for a couple years in a row, built the program from the inside out. And now, you know, they come out, they're a juggernaut. Like, they have great players. And that's the problem about this. Like, somebody like Alex Bregman could be the face of the league. Somebody like Carlos Correa could be the face of the league. George Springer is an absolute stud. UConn kid, by the way. New Britain, born and raised. Let's but go. <laughs> now it's just, you know, that's gone. You're always going to have this stain. And you can go in there and you can deny. You can say, no, 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 it never happened. But I'm watching videos of George Springer being in a 3-0 count and he hits the trash ban bang, so he knows a changeup is coming. And then he blasts a 3-0 changeup 500 feet to left field. And it, like, those things just don't happen. Bad for baseball, bad for the game, terrible. Fuck the Astros. There should always be an asterisk next to that World Series victory. And I'm sick and tired of it. You have to keep talking about this, which is just upsetting me. <laughs> so I guess in a way you could probably argue that the season not happening is probably the best thing that could happen to the Astros because one could definitely uh, think that the Astros were going to get beamed and be a target at when they entered the batter's box. So absolutely. This is the Astros are just are thanking God every day that they're not at the field playing baseball. Cause this is all that we would be talking about if there was a season right now. Yeah. Would you, Sit. would you think that the, well, what, what, which one of the two scenarios sounds more likely that the team would have a drastic dip in production or that they would be still pretty good, but they would be like, just, I don't even know, like the antichrist, Going if it's through. as if it's as like cr crazy as I said it was, where like they're banging the trash can every freaking game, they would have sucked this year. All right. If, if you all of a sudden just don't know what pitch is coming, you got to figure it out. I, there's just no way that doesn't account for dozens of wins. Yeah, that's what I kind of figured. I just didn't know because like they're they do have a ton of talent, as you said, like with Bregman, Springer, Altuve, and Correa. Those are like huge names in terms of like batting production and like we now know we now will never know what was really the like what produced those numbers. Was it the cheating or was it actual skill? Yeah, and I think a lot of it is like I look at a guy like Bregman, you know, third baseman, absolute stud, you know, don't get me wrong, went to LSU, was just an absolute freak show there, second pick of the draft. And he's a small guy. Like he's not you know, some massive third baseman, just some like some Ken Kim any looking dude. Like he's an average looking guy and he just hits the living shit out of the ball. If you take the fact away that he knows what's coming, is he going to put up the 35, 120, 300 year that, you know, he's now accustomed to? I don't think so. Yeah, definitely for sure. Um, so another thing to talk about, I guess, is the Angels are probably one of the more hyped teams because they have uh mike trout obviously who is you would also agree is one of the best is like the best baseball player of all time of all time i don't know if he's of all time right now he's the best baseball player in the mlb right now in the sap i was just talking to my friend about this a few days ago it's like i feel like he is like for being as good as he is in his sport we know like if you name another player from another sport that's considered the best most people know it who don't even like watch the sport but i feel like mike trout is like an anomaly in this field like you talked about earlier how baseball is getting declining in viewership and like with every generation it becomes less and less popular so do you feel like in in a weird way mike trout is kind of underrated for his greatness mike trout is underrated 
because Mike Trout doesn't want to extend himself as the face of baseball. That's why he's underrated. He could easily be the face, the face of baseball. The MLB has come out and said this guy doesn't want to leave New Jersey when he's home, doesn't want to present himself as the face of baseball. And you know what? If that's the case, that's fine. It's not going to judge his greatness. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer right now. He could retire tomorrow, and I think he'd be a first ballot Hall of Famer. But his shortcomings in becoming the face, are, I think, are his own. Do you think that the way that the Angels have kind of built around him, like failing in a way, that that's also done damage to him? Because he really has never made the playoffs, right? It's not that he's failed. I mean, their owner's Art Moreno. Like, the guy makes moves. Remember years ago, he went out and got Josh Hamilton, gave him a huge contract, thought that would take him over the top. Mm -hmm. That was one of the worst contracts in baseball history. Yeah, like Albert Pujols a, a long time ago, too. Was another... oh, yeah, now that's just a bad contract. But, but that's like what no, happens in baseball. Like when you sign a 10-year right. contract past like year five, you're basically admitting you're having dead money for the next five. Right, but he goes out and he gets Shohei two years ago. He got Anthony Rendon in the offseason this year. I mean, there are players there. Yeah, so my question to you is going to be, do you think this is the year where the Angels would have broken through and become like one of the elite teams? I don't know if they've been an elite team. I mean, they got they have Griffin Canning. Um, he's their ace. I mean, you know, he's, he's going to be a great fantasy player, great fantasy value this year. If you can pick him up in a little later, a little later round. But I just I don't see them having the pitching to be a great team. You you're not in love with the uh, two way pitcher hitter. <laughs> Listen, I, I would love to watch Shohei. I'll, I'll watch him play all day. He looks like a freak show. Looks fun to watch. But, you know, the, the rigors of Major League Baseball are going to hit him eventually. They already have. He's, you know, he hasn't pitched in over a year. Mm -hmm. So, but, I mean, they just don't have the, the pitching. I mean, I, I think they got Dylan Bundy from the Orioles. He's been kind of a bust. Um, Julio Tehran, uh, you know, he was good with the Braves. And he's got to kind of get his life back together and figure it out. So, you know, I uh, I don't see it. Yeah, maybe they could hit a little bit. They got Justin Upton out in left field, but uh, no. All right. So I guess we're going to head to the same city, but I'm going to ask you from a Red Sox perspective, you have to talk about the Mookie Betts trade. How did you react to it when it initially came out? Uh, very, very frustrating. I get it. I get it from a business perspective. He's got one year in the contract. He wants to become a free agent. But you are the Boston Red Sox. We're not the Milwaukee fucking Brewers. Go out, get that guy his money. Who cares? The Boston Red Sox print money. That's what they do. They print it. You go out, you have a homegrown talent like Mookie Betts, you sign him, you on the dotted line, get it done, and you build your next decade around that guy. You do whatever you have to do. I am so sick of them talking about the luxury tax. Shut the hell up about the luxury tax. You're the Boston Red Sox. How does that even, like, become an issue for a team like the Red Sox which are the, one of the bigger mar like it like in the top markets for baseball like where is this lack of money isn't baseball the one sport that basically has an unlimited cap yeah there is no lack of money for the Red Sox they may tell you there is but there isn't I feel like the deal with Nesson alone puts them oh. in like the money to keep a bookie bets around billions of dollars this team is worth and they they again they print money like, there's no reason not to sign this guy I get it. Oh, he's not going to sign a team-friendly deal. Would you sign a team-friendly deal? No, of course not. Not with the way, not with the money that's being thrown around these days. I mean, we're not talking about life-changing money. We're talking about multi-generational life-changing money. Mookie Betts's, you know, great-grandchildren are going to be all set because of the way he can play baseball. So did you like the trade from a Red Sox perspective? I feel like a lot of Red Sox fans are kind of like, they're more angry about the trade than like really seeing the assets in front of them. Yeah. I mean, pissed about the trade. You don't want to see him go. Yeah. I know why they did. I know why I did it, you know, but you don't want to see him go. I mean, I guess to get Alex Verdugo is, is a good return. I mean, there's still a chance that Mookie is going to be a free agent next year. and going to resign with the Red Sox. I mean, uh, you know, 30%, 40%, but yeah, I guess you get what you can get for him, but we should have stepped up to the plate. He gave him 12 years, $400 million, and walked away. So if the season happened today, what would your reasonable outlook for the Red Sox be? Would you expect them just to like completely drop out of contention, or do you think they still have a ton of talent around, like without like a bona fide star now, I guess? So uh, that's a tough question. I mean, yeah, I mean, they're going to be a shell of themselves. I mean, you could easily see themselves just – 
fading off like they did when Bobby Valentine was the manager, I think in 2011 or 12, the season we don't talk about before John Farrell kind of stepped up. But, um, you know, they, they, they love the new manager. I'm going to butcher his last name. It's like, it's Ron Renicky, I think. They love that guy. He's a, he's a team, he's a player first coach. They're going to play hard for him, but you know, the, this, the talent is just not going to be there. I mean, and last year was difficult enough and that we had career years from, you know, Devers. So uh, now you remove Mookie from that equation. It, it doesn't look good. <laughs> Don't forget about David Price. Well, oh, God, yeah. I mean, I'm not too upset to see him leave. I mean, it would be nice now we can get somebody in there who will start the game. The game will go for four hours. So that's pretty sweet. <laughs> but, it, you know, they didn't, just, they didn't really do anything this offseason. Yeah, they got Verdugo in the trade. Dustin Pedroia pretty much confirmed that he's done. Chris Sale is done for the year. He's getting time in John. And he's up Kevin Pillar, who's a nice piece for center field, but he's a defensive guy. He's a speedster. You know, he's not going to go out there and bash at 25 home runs. You know, Ben and on a down year. D- J.D. Martinez obviously didn't have the year he had in 2018. Still a good player. Um, is Andrew Bogarts. I mean, I think he's going to be the best player on the team. I think it's his team now. Um, you know, hopefully he kind of steps up. And Devers, you know, he's still, he looks like he's 14 years old. But, you know, if he can have a, a little bit of the season he had last year, I mean, that would be great. And then, you know, the, the great enigma, Jackie Bradley Jr., like who the hell knows how he's going to be. Yeah, I've heard rumors, though, that this manager that you have now is kind of like a, like a one-year rental just waiting for Cora to basically come back so you can just take him back with open arms. Do you feel like that's actually going to happen, or is that just kind of like smoke? That's absolutely accurate. Oh, okay. As, as soon as the MLB came out and said, we're only punishing Cora for what he did with the Astros, not what he did with the Red Sox, this is a one-year deal. Renicky will run it for a year. He'll step back and be bench, unless they like win the World Series or something. Um, he'll step back and be bench coach, and Cora comes back, and all is well. So now with the uh, Dodgers having Mookie and Price, do you feel like this is what's finally going to make them take that step of winning the World Series, or do you just think it's just going to be one of those teams that might not be able to gel in time? I mean, don't forget, the, the, the Dodgers are good. Oh, yeah, I mean, they're no. Very they're good. Top three. And, that, and now, now you put Mookie Betts in the mix. I mean, their biggest question is the pitching. They have Clayton Kershaw, who – is my age, but it's great to think he's getting old in baseball years. Like he's not the guy he was in 2008. So, uh, I mean, thankfully, you, you know, they, they have Walker Bueller to kind of pick up the, to pick up the slack, but their pitching staff isn't incredible. I mean, they have great hitters. I mean, they got, you know, Corey Seager at shortstop, Justin Turner at third base, who's, you know, Mr. Mr. Batting average. They got a stud um, recruit in Gavin Lux, another great sleeper fantasy pick. If you, uh, you're into that. You know, they re-signed Max Muncy. Uh, you know, I mean, they got players. Obviously, they have the Cody Bellingers in the world. And, you know, I mean, Jack Peterson hasn't been what he was in 2015, I think it was. But he's still a good player. Um, so, you know, we're going to have to see. I mean, I, I can – it's a World Series or bust for them. Like, they either win it and it's a success. But if they go there and they lose again, it's a huge failure for them. Do you think that World Series or bust is what determines if Mookie Betts would have stayed or not? Because you said earlier that you think there's like a 30 to 40 percent he chance he comes back. He's a World Series. He already has a World Series under his belt. I don't think if it was with the Dodgers, he's going to say, oh, I got to stay here and do this. Nah, you know, he's going to be, you know, he's going to hit the market. He's a Boris guy. I mean, he's going to get some outrageous contract. I don't think he's going to get Trout outrageous contract, but it's going to be up there. Why do you feel like he would come back to the team that just traded him away for a reason that you and I have both basically said is bullshit? Because I think Mookie understands it's a business. And if he comes back and then the Red Sox can offer him the contract that he was looking for in the first place, I mean, he knows he's beloved here. So, you know, I mean, and guys play for the Red Sox all the time. And they leave and they say, there are no fans like you have, like in the Red Sox. Same with the Yankees too. But that's because like we're East Coast teams, the most popular teams in baseball that's what people want to see. You're constantly in ESPN. You're on Sports Center. You're in the national news, in the national spotlight. You know, you go to these other places. Like, listen, I love baseball, but it's tough to stay up to, at 10 10 to see the first pitch when the Dodgers play the Padres. Yeah. Um, so, going back to Kershaw, you brought him up like, I don't know, a minute or two ago. And I feel like now that these Astro things have come out, Kershaw has lost to them in the World Series, and he gets battered by the entire like baseball world for being a unclutch playoff pitcher. So, do you feel like at all Clayton Kershaw is like getting the wrong treatment now, or do you feel like he still should people should still be heated at how unclutch I guess he is in those moments? 
So, yeah, I mean, it's not great if you think that the Astros are getting the, the signs and just smashing the hell out of the guy. But he's still, I mean, it's just not with the Astros. I mean, he's had other games where he's gotten just blown out in the playoffs after having an absolutely incredible regular season. And, you know, I mean, he pitched against, I think it was the it was the, the Nationals. He got hit around pretty hard. I mean, you know, he's just not, he's a great pitcher. He's another Hall of Famer. But his playoff record is just not what you think it would be. And that doesn't, and then, you know, the Astros don't help, but they're not the sole reason for that. And the reason that you feel like he would, he does so poorly is just all mental, you think? Or is it because like teams kind of figure him out towards when he gets to postseason? No, I, I think it's mental. I, I think, you know, Clint Grishaw has excellent stuff. But, you know, when you're facing a, like this stat we have on Clinton Kershaw, the worst ERA when facing elimination in the playoffs, Clinton Kershaw is a 5.77 ERA. You know, I mean, that's not what you want to see from your number one guy to go out there, take ball in the game seven, you know, and get blown out. Yeah, so do you feel like in a weird way that adding Price, even though he was kind of a salary dump, would somewhat help the uh, the Dodgers? Because he was good for the Red Sox in their um, World Series push. Yeah, he's an innings eater. I mean, he's going to go out there, he's going to throw 170 to 200 innings. You know, I think it'll be a little easier out there because I don't think he was one for the spotlight. He didn't want to come here and have interviewed every single day before every start, after every start. He's not who he is. So I think going out to the Dodgers, hopefully it'll be a little easier for him out there. I mean, I like David Price. He was good for the Red Sox, part of the World Series championship team. But, you know, it was time for him to move on. It just wasn't working. Mm -hmm. So let's just go hypothetically here. Um do you what team did you think was kind of set up to underachieve this season if it actually came to fruition or if it still might? <laughs> I say that very loosely. Oh yeah, so I definitely don't think uh, the season's going to happen. But if it did, let's go fantasy I think the, hypothetical. <laughs> yeah, I think the biggest team to underachieve this year would ha- probably have to be the uh, Angels. I just when you spend all that money. You know, you want to see a product in the field that will constantly win you games. I just don't think the Angels can do that this year. I, for some reason, kind of feel like the Yankees had been kind of set up to underachieve. Do you feel like that's possible, or do you think that the, the Garrett Cole signing is truly going to revolutionize their team? No, I mean, uh, listen, I'm a Red Sox fan. I hope they suck, and I hope Garrett Cole goes 0-20 with a 9 ERA. But, I mean, he's still a stud. But, you know, he was a stud with the Astros, so you get that little asterisk next to his name because of everything that's going on there. I mean, hopefully he's got the, you know, he can turn around for them a little bit and give them the extra push. But, you know, I mean, they're going to be a playoff team. There's no way they're going to miss the playoffs. You know, and then it just depends on the postseason if they can put it all together again or if they're going to fall a little short, which I hope they do. Yeah, I feel like the Yankees are one of those teams that, like, they have all the pieces, but both their stars of Giancarlo and Judge just are never healthy. They are probably two of the most injury-prone players in the sport. Heard a lot. I mean, Giancarlo Stanton, I don't even think I've even seen him play for the Yankees yet. All I can think of him is with the Marlins. I mean, he gets hurt that often. Um, yeah, and Aaron Judge, I mean, but it's tough. It's like these guys are physical specimens. Like, you know, Mookie Betts isn't a physical specimen. You don't look at that guy and think, holy shit, I bet that guy is incredible. Aaron Judge is a monster. He's got to be, what, 6'7", 260? Mm-hmm. I mean, guys who look like that don't play baseball, and they're not as athletic as he is. Gene Carlos Stan should be a tight end for the Dolphins, you know, but he happens to play baseball. Why do you feel like built athletes like that can't play baseball? Like, what about the frame? Oh, well, they, well they, listen, they can play very well, as we've seen. Oh, I just they mean just from a durability standpoint. Yeah, they just can't stay out there for 162 every single year, year after year. You know, they play balls to the wall. They're huge. They're jacked. At some point, you know, you're going to get a muscle pull. You're going to get a muscle tear. Something's going to cramp up. These guys are just such physical freaks that it's got to be so difficult to keep themselves in shape, baseball shape, for 162 games to play every single day. Okay. And uh, what team do you really think is, like, going to overachieve? I love the Philadelphia Phillies this year. Took them a year to figure it out last year, get everybody together on the same team. But now I think they're ready to go. They got Reese Hoskins, Bryce Harper. They signed Didi Gregorius. I think they picked up Zach Wheeler. They got the best catcher in baseball, JT Real Muto. They got Aaron Nola leading the staff. Jake Arrieta is is hanging on, but, I mean, he's still a serviceable two to three. You know, the unsung hero, I think, offensively for them, Gene Segura, who constantly gets on base, steals bases, leads the team in runs. It's hard not to love that guy. And then Scott Kingery is hanging on at second base. So I 
I think this is the year that the Phillies put it all together and we see them in October if there is one. So do you feel like Harper is one of those players that is just oh, media overhyped or do you think he's actually just a very solid baseball player that just gets too much attention? I think Harper is a top five baseball player. He's an absolute stud. You know, I think about it from his time. The dude was like 16 years old. He's in the cover of Sports Illustrated as the next LeBron James of baseball. I mean, that's hard to live up to. But then he goes out. He doesn't go to – he finishes high school in three years, takes his senior year of high school, and plays juco ball out in Los, An- uh, Las Vegas, in some, I think some college in Nevada maybe, wins the Golden Spike Award as the best amateur baseball player in the country, hits like 32 home runs in that league, in a wood bat league, to prepare himself for the draft. Gets picked up, comes to the Phillies. I think he's an absolute stud. I'm a huge Bryce Harper fan. I think all the hate on him is not well-deserved. Does his job, goes out there. You never hear about the guy outside of the game, you know, being a douchebag or you know, anything that doesn't involve baseball. I'm a huge Bryce Harper fan. So do you feel like in a weird way that, like, because I feel like when they Trout and uh, Harper came out, it was kind of like an either-or. And do you think just by them comparing him to like or putting him in the same category as Trout, when Trout took such big ascension to where he is today, Harper still was a really good player, but he just couldn't ever match like hit for hit, I guess, with Trout. I think Bryce Harper's a great player, and he's going to be a great player for many, many years. He's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. He's going to have the numbers because I think he started in the MLB at 19 years old. Mm-hmm. Mike Trout is a generational talent, and I may not see a better baseball player than Mike Trout for the rest of my life or your life. Well, that's uplifting and depressing at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Well, you probably got a good 60 years left. Oh, okay. I got to live with the 60. <laughs> uh, you got anything else MLB on your mind? Just go Red Sox. I hope the season works out. I hope we play. I don't think it's going to happen, but, you know, we'll see how it goes. If it does, we're going to for sure have you on a season preview. <laughs> Oh, I'll be ready to rock and roll. If we have a baseball season and they kind of create it and they give me a date to look forward to, I'll be the happiest person you ever met in your entire life. All right. Well, uh, I'll, I'll say a prayer for both of us. Thank you. I appreciate it. I think all the good blessings I can get right now. <laughs> all right. Because I pray so much. <laughs> in my free Got to start somewhere. I guess so. I guess I'll pray for sports. That's where we'll start. All right. Uh, yep. Thanks for That's coming on, have. Ronnie Props. <laughs> thanks for having me. Talk to you soon. All right, uh, thanks to Ronnie Props for coming on this uh, week's episode. It was uh, good to talk about baseball. I mean, I really would hope that a season of any kind would start. So if baseball could find a way to pick it up, I think we would all benefit from that. Even those who don't like baseball, I think we'd be pretty open-minded to uh, trying to test it out. So uh, join us next Tuesday for another episode of the Corey Walsh Podcast, and please like and subscribe.